I'm very honored to be with, here, with you here today. Thank you for the opportunity to share some remarks with you from the perspective of UN Women, and specifically our contributions to achieving SDG Goal 5, Target 5.2, on elimination of all forms of violence against women and girls. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development affirms the importance of gender equality and the empowerment of women to the achievement of sustainable development. It clearly states that women and girls must enjoy equal access to quality education, economic resources and political participation, as well as equal opportunities with men and boys for employment, leadership and decision making at all levels. The inclusion of the specific reference to the elimination of violence against women and girls as a specific target area under Goal 5 confirms that such violence is not only a barrier to gender equality, women's empowerment and overall sustainable development, it is also an impediment to the achievement of other sustainable development goals, including on poverty eradication, health, education, food security and just and peaceful societies. As such, addressing violence against women and girls should constitute a cross-cutting issue in policies and programs aimed at the achievement of other sustainable development goals. The universal application and the human rights-based approach of the 2030 Agenda means that all women and girls, regardless of their geographic location, their situation, their individual circumstances, are entitled to a life free from violence. This is critical to ensuring that no one is left behind in our efforts to tackle this problem. The 2030 Agenda also builds upon an international framework that addresses violence against women and girls, including the commitments that we all know and are familiar with under CEDAW, the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, various General Assembly and Human Rights Council resolutions, as well as the agreed conclusions of the 57th session of the Commission on the Status of Women and it provides all of us, governments, civil society, and United Nations entities, with a comprehensive roadmap for addressing this violence. Unfortunately, we are all too aware that violence can accompany a woman throughout the various stages of her life, from pre-birth, through adolescence, into adulthood, and in a range of settings, in home, at schools, in public spaces, and on public transportation. It has numerous short and long-term impacts for survivors' physical and mental health, well-being and safety. Research has shown that women and girls experience violence, use health services more frequently, and are more likely to report a worse, a worse health status and quality of life than those who do not experience any violence. Experience this violence also has a ripple effect for families, communities, wider society and the economy, through lost employment and productivity, as my colleague Mighty already has explained, impacting national budgets and impeding long-term growth. It can also have a serious intergenerational effect, with evidence showing that children who witness violence at home are at greater risk of engaging in beha violent behavior as adults. Ending violence against women and girls is a key priority area for you and women. We advocate for more joint, comprehensive approaches to preventing and responding to violence against women and girls, increasing access to services for survivors, making private and public spaces safer for women and girls, while advocating for and driving broader social norms change on gender equality, non-discrimination and non-violence. More specifically at the global level, UN Women works with countries to advance the international normative framework relating to ending violence against women and girls through its support to intergovernmental processes such as the General Assembly and the Commission on the Status of Women. At the country level, UN Women supports governments in adopting and enacting legal reforms aligned with international standards, de developing dedicated national action plans to prevent and address violence against women, as well as strengthening coordination among a wide range of key stakeholders all of which are required for sustainable and meaningful action. As we know, effective prevention is key to stopping violence from occurring in the first place and to complement the actions of the response system to prevent further cycles of violence from happening. In partnership with several UN agencies, including our colleagues at UNFPA, 
UN Women has led the development of the first ever UN framework for preventing violence against women and girls, which promotes a common understanding on preventing this violence for the UN system, policymakers, and other key, st key stakeholders, and provides a theory of change to support this action. It was launched in 2015, so several years ago, but for the first time, this guidance provides concrete examples of evaluated interventions to prevent intimate partner violence and other forms of violence for a range of settings. UN Women indeed is due to launch further sector-specific guidance on prevention of violence for the media and also for sports sectors, as well as a joint publication with our colleagues at ILO on addressing violence in the workplace, and this will happen later this year. As I mentioned, we know that women and girls face a violence in public and private spaces, and this affects their everyday lives. It restricts their use of these spaces, and it renders them effectively isolated in their own private spaces. Through UN Women's Global Programme on Safe Cities and Safe Public Spaces, we are helping to increase the number of cities, and this currently stands at 40 cities worldwide, and other public settings that have safe and empowering spaces for women and girls. We are assisting mayors and local authorities in these cities to implement policies and programs to prevent and respond to sexual harassment in public places, implement gender responsive planning and budgets in their city plans, and develop and implement infrastructure projects to increase women's economic empowerment and their safety. By using a multidisciplinary approach, UN Women is working with urban planners, architects, gender specialists, women's organizations and local government authorities, whilst at the same time taking the local context into consideration and thus ensuring that the SDGs are realized at the local level. As we have heard from Mighty um, earlier, um, through the work of the joint program and the development of the essential services package, UN Women, UNFPA and other partner countries, or partner agencies and countries, with the generous support of the governments such as the Basque Country, is working to improve the quality of access to quality multi-sectoral and survivor centre responses across a range of sectors, the health, justice and policing, social services, and obviously the coordination of these sectors. In 10 selected pilot countries and nearly 40 self-starter countries. The provision of such services is critical to minimising the risk of re-victimisation and also to ensuring that the perpetrators are held accountable. In addition, in order to truly grasp the magnitude and the complexity of the issue of violence against women and girls, and to develop and implement appropriate policies and programs to address this problem, the systematic collection of the analysis of data on the causes and the consequences of violence against women, that it, which is disaggregated by age, ethnicity, place of occurrence and other relevant characteristics, is very important. UN Women, as the co-custodian of the indicators under SDG Target 5.2, um, is working closely with WHO, UNFPA, and other UN partner agencies to improve the availability, the quality, and the reporting and use of data on violence against women. UN Women, together with these partners, has recently launched a global program on VOD data, which is developing and strengthening standards to measure this violence which is also building national capacities to collect and analyze um, violence against women data with a focus on implementation of prevalence surveys and also the supporting the use of data for policy and programming. In addition, in order to strengthen the knowledge base on ending violence against women and girls, in 2016, UN Women launched the Global Database. This database serves as a monitoring tool for all member states' implementation of the SDGs so far and target areas on ending violence against women and girls, including measures that they are taking in the areas of laws and policies, prevention, responses, access to services, and data collection. Indeed, UN Women continues to manage this global database as part of the knowledge platform, its global knowledge platform to end violence against women and girls, which is an online resource designed to serve the needs of policymakers program implementers and other practitioners dedicated to addressing violence against women and girls. And if you hadn't had the opportunity to actually look at this um, virtual knowledge centre, I would very much um, advise you to, to take the opportunity when you can because it really is a very rich resource and it's indeed used by many governments and many of our civil society partners. 
Another crucial aspect of eliminating violence against women and girls is tackling the issue of harmful practices, such as female genital mutilation and child, early and forced marriage, which are specifically addressed under Goal 5, Target 5.3, as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Since 2015, UN Women has been collaborating with UNICEF and UNFPA in Phase 2 of its joint global program on female genital mutilation cutting, accelerating change, to strengthen the interlinkages between gender equality, violence against women and girls, and female genital mutilation, in order to address this problem in a more comprehensive manner. In 2019, this year, UN Women will also be part of the joint UNICEF and UNFPA global program to accelerate action to end child marriage. Here, UN Women will again focus on strengthening the gender aspects of the program's approach to prevention of and response to this problem. Building upon its existing policy and programmatic work to end violence against women and girls, UN Women, along with our partners UNFPA and UNDP, are participating in the Spotlight Initiative which I'm sure that you have a, you're aware of, and which is a partnership between the United Nations and the European Union, which will provide target, or is providing targeted, large-scale investments to integrate a comprehensive approach to ending violence against women and girls, again with a focus on leaving no one behind. As my colleague Maiti has mentioned, this initiative has already been rolled out in various regions in the world, in Asia, with a focus on trafficking on women and girls, and it will follow shortly in sub-Saharan Africa with a focus on sexual and gender-based violence, in Latin America with again the focus on femicide, and the Caribbean and Pacific with an emphasis on addressing domestic violence. As a Sustainable Development Goal Model Fund, this Spotlight Initiative reflects an innovative approach for catalyzing an enhanced, joined up UN United Nations response to addressing violence against women and girls and advancing gender equality and women's empowerment. It is important to acknowledge how far we have come as a global community in addressing violence against women and girls. But we do recognize that there is still much left to do to fully eradicate this problem. I provided some highlights this afternoon of some of UN Women's work and its programs and initiatives to end violence against women and girls, as well as our key partnerships with other UN agencies. A key factor in our success to date has been where we, as a UN system, have comprehensively and robustly addressed the root causes of such violence, namely the systemic gender-based discrimination and gender equality. Removing these root causes, ending impunity for perpetrators, addressing the various risk factors that contributes to its occurrence, and increasing the political and economic and social empowerment of women and girls are all key to reducing their vulnerability to this violence. Indeed, they are also crucial to realizing many of the other sustainable development goals, including the ones that I previously mentioned on health, well-being, quality education, decent work, and economic growth. As we move forward with this work, we need to keep in mind considerations of intersectionality and really understanding what it means to really fully implement the principle of leaving no one behind, which is a central tenant of the 2030 Agenda. It has been recognized that despite our progress in meeting global goals and targets, not everyone has benefited from this progress, nor has they been part of shaping the agenda. There are women and girls who are more likely to experience violence due to factors such as race, sexuality, sexual orientation, gender identity, age, class, class nationality, disabilities and faith, to name but a few. Indeed, we need to consider those who have already been left behind. We should make sure that these individuals and groups are at the forefront of our work going forward. Intersectionality not only helps us to identify different vulnerabilities and disadvantages, it also defines different knowledge that is critical in our work going forward. And indeed, these individuals should not be merely classified as vulnerable, as we tend to put them in these groups, but they are invaluable agents of change who are best placed to tell us about their experiences and help create the solutions that we need. In some violence against women and girls is a complex issue. We're all aware of this, and it requires a long-term and sustainable approach. As such, all of us together must stand united. The fight for gender inequality is, is everyone's responsibility. Families, our colleagues, 
our employers, our trade unions, our civil society, women's organisations, the media, law enforcement, public institutions, ministers and indeed heads of states need to lead this fight from the front and lead by example. We must use our considerable collective capabilities and capacities to reduce the burden that is disproportionately carried by women in this fight. Strengthening the alliance with men and boys is also crucial to this. They must be considered and valued as equal partners in the drive for transformational change to ensure that the dominant and harmful masculinity that has been so prevalent before and which is so deeply rooted in patriarchy and normalises the abuse of women and girls is now completely rejected. The targets of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development are not optional. They're what we have all signed up to. We must never tolerate a world where violence is inevitable. Rather, we must strive to make a real world where women and girls can finally enjoy a life free from it. Thank you.